Hi everyone and welcome to another video for the Tier Portal version 18 playlist. In this video we're going to be looking at program blocks, uh, specifically organization blocks, so OBs. Now when you first create a PLC, it will come with a single OB, OB1, and that's called main. What this OB is doing is it's a cyclic OB, so it's called uh, by the PLC um, every cycle and all of the contents within this block are executed. So right now we have nothing on here. So this um, particular OB would do nothing. But if we were to add some logic in here, such as a contact and a coil, the PLC would now execute this and this every single cycle because it's in OB1. And you structure your program um, around these objects. So if you double click on add new block, this window opens and we can see the different blocks that we are capable of adding. So there are four main blocks, organization blocks, function blocks, functions, and data blocks. In this particular video, we're just going to concentrate on organization blocks. So this is a program cycle. This is what OB1 is. It's a cyclic OB and it is executed every single time that the PLC performs a cycle of its program. But there are other versions uh, of this block. So you have startups. So this is the blo a block that will run once when the PLC changes from stop to run. You have time delay interrupts. So this will interrupt a cyclic program such as OB1 in order to um, run a particular block at a very specific time of day. And then you have a cyclic interrupt. So again, interrupts the program cycle at a specific interval. Hardware interrupts, which interrupt the program cycle if particular things happen to your hardware, such as an event where somebody unplugged, unplugged a module or um, something went into fault. Uh, there's a lots of different things that can cause hardware interrupts. So um, you need to refer to the documenta documentation um, and the event must be defined uh, in the properties of the module as well as sort of said here. Um, so you need to actually configure it to cause a hardware interrupt. Time errors, diagnostic errors. Diagnostic errors is a useful one because things like Profinet, um, IO errors and things like that will trigger this and you can use that to pick up the diagnostic error event. And we'll come on to these again in, in um, later videos, exactly how to use this stuff, but that's getting into a bit more sort of advanced territory there. Um, programming error, this is a great one to put on when you are building your project, especially if you're new, because um, there'll be a lot of times where you forget to put something on an interface or something like that, and the PLC will just stop. And you'll be told in the diagnostics what the error is, um, but it's uh, sometimes it doesn't matter. You're, you know, you're testing something else, and, uh, and what you want to do is just, is just have the PLC running, whether there's a fault or not. Um, so having programming error in there is great. Same for IO access error. If you've got things set up in your project for IO, like we have in previous videos, set up the input and output modules um, because they don't exist. If you were to simulate this in PLC Sim Advance, for example, um, having IO access error in there stops the PLC from saying, I can't access any of my IO. Um, it is better now because P the PLC knows it's being simulated. Um, but if you had a, C a, a real CPU, for example, you'd still get the IO access error. Um, so putting this block in there suppresses that. And there's all stuff down here around motion control as well, synchronous cycling, status updates. Um, and and yeah, it's uh, there's lots of different options um, to interrupt your main program cycle. But for now, OB1 is the one that we want to be using. Um, it's where we will start our project and uh, it's the one that is configured for us at the beginning. So let's have a look at some of the properties. 
Now you can get to the properties with the um, main OB open down here. But personally, what I like to do is right click and go to properties because I just feel like it's uh, a nicer way of looking at it. So it's the same information that's down here, but you get it in a nice window. So here you can rename the block, um, have a look at various other configurations. So you can see it's a type OB. It's in the program cycle event class. You can't change any of this stuff. Uh, you can change between ladder and function block, but you can't change between, say, structured text and then back to ladder and uh, instruction lists. So in previous Siemens systems, you used to be able to change between ladder, function block and instruction list. You can't do that anymore because of how Siemens puts together ladder. Um, and also instruction list is uh, a deprecated language. Siemens still support it, but by IEC standards, it's uh, deprecated. And you can set the number. So by default, um, the number is OB1. You can change that in here, but it's not advised to change OB1 to anything else. Just leave it as one. Um, you can put some information in here around what family you want this block to belong to, who the author was who developed it, and do your own custom user ID as well as a comment. Timestamps are useful because the this is how Tier Portal actually checks whether something's changed in your project. So timestamps are one of the things that is checked between an online project and a offline project. So between the PRC and your offline project, if the block has changed um, its modified date or the interface or the code or data, um, you're going to get a, a comparison error saying that the one on the PLC is either newer than the one in the project or the one in the project is newer than the one on the PLC. So compilation, this is one that will catch people out at the beginning. Tier Portal does not automatically turn on, can, uh, can be simulated with PLC sim. And you'll also find that you can't turn it on here either. And that's because this block belongs to the project and the project has a um, configuration for simulation, which I'll show you after that will need to be turned on if you want to simulate your blocks. Protection, if you want to set up know-how protection, read-only protection, um, with write protection and uh, copying. That's all done in here. That's a separate video to discuss how that stuff is uh, is managed. But um, that's all done in this protection pane here. And then attributes. This is where you will most likely come in to change stuff. So the biggest one will be this one here, whether you are optimized or unoptimized. And in the video description, I will link an article that I wrote about the difference between optimized and unoptimized data. Um, personally, I don't use optimized. I uncheck every single block that I create. Uh, and that's because I make use of particular instructions that need to explicitly know where their data, um, where their data is. So optimized, you don't necessarily know where your data is. Tier portal optimizes it and puts it. Uh, or packs it slightly differently for the block to optimize its space in the controller, um, which is great. Uh, it should speed things up, but then you'll find that what a lot of people do is use it incorrectly and end up slowing stuff down as a result of that. Um, so I just turn it off. And you can turn it off simply by clicking it. You get a little warning saying if you activate this, the block interface will change. And we'll see that now. So if I click OK, if you go back on this video and have a look at how this looked um, beforehand, it looks very different now. And we actually have access to a lot more information directly than we did uh, on the interface beforehand. And that's it for how we use the, um, the main OB. I know we haven't actually gone down the road of putting anything in this yet, but there are configuration steps, as you've seen, um, for setting this stuff up and having a good base understanding of why this object is there is important. So just remember that everything that's in this object will be scanned first or um, is the main priority. 
you can have more than one uh, cyclic program. Um, and I believe that the number, you know, the lowest block number is uh, is the priority in that case. Um, I will double check that, though. And if that's wrong, I'll put it in the notes below.